everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Before I introduce Jennifer, um, I'm just going to go through a few things. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Lauren Oakley. I'm the Events Coordinator at Staffordshire Chambers of Commerce. If you haven't used Zoom before, please do not worry. Um, you just need to be aware of two functions. One of these is the chat function. This can be used to communicate with us throughout the session. And the other function is the Q&A function. If you can hear and see me, if you could just write hi in the chat function, then that would be great, thank you. Lovely, hi. Hi everybody. Hi Pete, hi Alicia. Hi Di, lovely. Looks like everybody can hear us. Um, Jennifer will be answering questions live after the presentation. So if you do have any questions, please pop that in the Q&A box, either at the top or bottom of your screen, um, depending on whether you're on a laptop or um, computer. If you feel um, you need to ask a question in the middle of the session, please pop that in the Q&A function and it will be answered at the end. We cannot hear or see you, so please mm. don't worry if you're eating your breakfast or having a drink, you can only see us. So I'm going to control Jennifer's slides today. So I'm delighted to introduce Jennifer. So Jennifer, whenever you're ready, please. Okay. Thanks. I'm ready, Laura. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Hello, hello, everybody. Um, um, good morning, and hello from Malaysia. Actually, good morning to all of you, and those of you who are in, in this parts of the world. Good afternoon. Um, just to uh, start off, as Laura mentioned, um, I am Jennifer Lopez, the executive director of the British Malaysian Chamber of Commerce. And um, a bit about myself before we go into, Lauren has already showed the slide on Malaysia. That will be one of my first, my first uh, introduction, but I thought it would be good to share a bit about myself. I'm a Malaysian, but been to UK many times as part of my work, not just with the chamber, but also before that in my previous organizations, quite familiar. My previous organizations have been with UK-based uh, UK organizations. So I uh, started my career with uh, the big four, um, you know, trained as a chartered accountant and I joined uh, the, uh, a global professional education body. Professional accountancy body has their technical and policy head and subsequently heading the operations of the global body in Malaysia. So basically I'm sharing this with you because you know, the experience has allowed me to understand how a chamber works, what are the membership needs, what are our stakeholders' needs. And prior to joining the chamber, I was with another big four. A big four, if you're familiar with the accountancy world, it's the largest accountancy professional firms around the world. And there, uh, prior to the joining the BMCC, I was heading their branding and um, business development um, so that again gives me an opportunity to understand how important is it to brand and position organizations. And this is part of the value that we try to create for our members. So that's on me and you know, to share. So my transition as the head of chamber for the last into the role um, two years ago has been not so difficult because in my previous roles, I'm able to understand what are the members' needs, how to do stakeholder engagement, and that's the value that we try to bring to our members here in Malaysia and our stakeholders in the UK, i.e. the UK businesses looking to expand. So um, in my presentation today, I will share about Malaysia, a quick overview of Malaysia, how Malaysia is coping with the COVID uh, you know, 19 pandemic, where we are today. And, and then I'll move on to the role of the chamber and how we support UK businesses in Malaysia. So uh, with that, we move on to the first, present, first slide, which is Malaysia, an overview of Malaysia. 
I'm not sure if, uh, Lauren, the previous slide, please. Previous slide. Okay. Uh, so Malaysia itself, if you are familiar with the Southeast Asia region, it sits in the center of Southeast East Asia, bordering Thailand and the Gulf, and Singapore uh, at the bottom, and also we border uh, um, Indonesia. So Malaysia has 13 states and three federal territories. The two regions, uh, the peninsula and the Borneo Island, it's separated by the Southeast A South China Sea. And where um, Sabah and Sarawak is where we border with um, Indonesia. Currently, our population is 32 million, multi-ethnic, multicultural. English is widely spoken. It taught, it's taught in schools and English is the business language. And um, the last few years or may, you know, the last decade, the government has put a lot of efforts in upskilling of our talent pool and there's continuous government efforts to upgrade. And talent has been a key draw factor for businesses to trade and invest in Malaysia. We are currently, even more so importantly, currently there's been, a, not only currently, the last few years, there's been strong focus into the move into digital. Digital in, and even so more important now, especially you know, with the working from home and how businesses operate, Digital has been a key, key important factor and the move towards digital infrastructure and transformation, it is the strong focus of Malaysia and the Malaysian government. Then, and also businesses, I would say, we started many years ago as an agriculture uh, economy, moving on to industry and now more services and knowledge based, high tech innovation based economy. As you see, Malaysia is in the center of um, Southeast Asia, strategically located. So it offers very much uh, uh, ideal, I would say, a good destination for companies, a uh, cost competitive because currently, you know, our ringgit is about five to the pound. So for five, for one pound, you can get about five ringgit plus and so it offers a cost competitive location for investors, especially to set up regional operations. So we do have many UK companies that are based in Malaysia that operate out of Malaysia, you know, um, offering their services in the region. The next slide, please, Lauren. So why Malaysia? It, is, has, it has a vibrant business economy, very much market oriented. And, you know, uh, if you are familiar with Malaysia or if you are not, we are part of the Commonwealth. So there's a strong affinity towards British made, made goods and services. The, our legal system, our education, very much grounded based on the British education system. So familiarity to British made goods and services, the quality of those products are very strong among the Malaysian citizens. So well-developed financial uh, system. You know, we have UK banks like um, HSBC and Standard Chartered who have been here you know, for more than a century, you know, 100 over years they have established in Malaysia. And the central bank is very strong in terms of protecting the interests of the people and businesses in Malaysia. We do have very much um, supportive government policies, pro-business policies, the government is always looking at ways to attract foreign direct investments. Even currently with the uh, recent economic recovery package, there is incentives to attract foreign investors into the country. As I mentioned earlier, an educated workforce, talented, young, educated. We have many universities. In Malaysia is one of the countries that we have five British universities with full campuses. And uh, that's very well established. We have a full list of UK international schools. So, you know, when investors are looking at Malaysia or even looking to trade, set up offices, this is one of the criteria, the whole ecosystem. Is there a good family ecosystem in Malaysia? You know, we have, uh, we have many international schools who are part of the members of the chamber and, you know, offering 
Cambridge education systems and you know very much UK education system. And also, as I mentioned, English is the second language. It's taught as a second language in schools. Many people speak English. It is a business language. Of course, when you um, deal with um, the government agencies, it is our national language. Communications are national, but however, the government officials where at every level they speak English and it's widely spoken. We are allowed to, to communicate, write letters in English. Communication is allowed in English. So there's no issues in terms of language barriers. Another strong uh, language that's widely spoken because of our multi we are multi-ethnic is Mandarin. So Malaysia has also seen as a hub to you know, deal with China. There are lots of uh, service uh, global business centers that use Malaysian talent when they, when they deal uh, which is based on Asia, deal with Asia specific clients, especially China, China based clients. In addition, uh, one, of why, one of the key factors of why Malaysia, we have a very developed infrastructure. If you've been to Malaysia, you will see our highways are really up to very, very modern, very up to date. We have railway connectivities, intercity connectivities through our rails and to from you know where from the suburbs into town we have um, mass rapid transit systems and LRTs that's uh, light rapid transit systems. We have a well equipped airport and seven international seaports. So um, and our telco network, while it's still being upgraded, we have high quality telco. There's a lot of connectivity. Next slide, please, Lauren. Okay, this is just to show you a snapshot of a connectivity. This slide will be shared to show that how well connected and how well the infrastructure facility of Malaysia is. We show this, this is picked up from one of the government agency where they used to promote MIDA, the Malaysian in, uh, Investment Development Authority, where they showcase Malaysia's infrastructure. Just to share with you. Yeah, next slide, please. And these are some of the accolades that Malaysia has won. We are very proud to be upgraded recently by the World Bank last year to the 12th position on ease of doing business. And also, um, as I mentioned, we have got recognition as one of the best countries to invest in or do business in. Next slide, please. Okay. So, like all countries around the world, we have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So let me just share with you how we have been coping. Next slide. Okay. So how the, we did, uh, when the pandemic hit us was early March. Okay, early March, we started off with lower numbers. And when in March, the numbers started increasing. And what the government did immediately was how Malaysia approached the combating the pandemic was a six, a six phase approach and currently we are back to business after we started a lockdown a partial lockdown we call it the movement control orders so that was in march 18 so we all have been working from home since then and effective from may what has happened is that there was we call out we, uh, the government announced conditional movement control order where businesses were allowed to go back into work so we with strict SOP social distancing and currently effective in fact is today that businesses is back to normal of course with strict SOPs that we have to follow most businesses are open from today so how it's impacted um, travel restrictions as all countries face so tourism sector and the aviation sector was the most bad hit including our hotels disruptions we had much disruptions into the global supply and demand chain as Malaysia is positioned as a key player in the global supply chain. We have many manufacturers here who supply, you know, produce for the world. So that was hit. Now everything is going back to normal. We had um, during the MCO period, the lockdown period, you know, surveys show that many companies did not have sales or revenue during the period. Cash flow was a major issue in terms of people struggled but now it's picking up of course you know the effect has been 
um, pressures on manufacturing sales, decrease in total exports, and uh, we expected the employment rate to increase. But saying all that, we do have some good news in the horizon. Our GDP, you know, when we closed last year, it was about 43 uh, of course, it's a decline from the previous years because of the global trade wars. But uh, when we closed during the quarter, it was about, you know, it's dropped. I think I have a slide on that. And added pressure due to the, the oil price uh, drop in crude oil prices, especially Malaysia is part of an oil producing, is part of an oil producing country. Next slide, please. So this is quickly to show you that how the government has combated the impact you know, to, to the COVID-19 uh, impact to businesses and to the nation as a whole. And uh, immediately you know, after putting in the, the um, strict orders, they also looked at how we, they can be able to stimulate the economy and support businesses and the people as a whole, the Malaysian people. And so uh, they issued um, three time, three, three, three levels of stimulus packages totaling to USD 58 million. So that was about uh, 260 billion in terms of Malaysian ringgit and 25 billion out of it to support uh, businesses in Malaysia. So if you look, it was about 18% of the GDP. Next slide, please. So only, as I said today, we move into recoveries Phase. It's uh, good news for many of us, many people in businesses, businesses that have been closed, open up today, you know, but however, our borders are still closed and uh, today Malay the government announced that it is opening up for our expatriates who have been stuck outside, but they already have, um, you know, passes to work in Malaysia. So that has a good news for many UK businesses or international investors here as they are able to bring in talent into the country to continue work. So last Friday, in line with the recovery phase, the government announced a short-term recovery plan amounting to 35 billion ringgit to stimulate the economy and propel you know, businesses to operate in a new normal. So 40 key initiatives have been identified and I think a very important to support businesses and to curb any unemployment, further unemployment, you know, it is the wage subsidy program the government is giving out. We also look at, because we all work in a new norm now, move into digital. So allocations have been put for reskilling and upskilling programs of the Malaysian talent, spur establishment of incentives to, you know, establish new businesses and startups. Support SMEs who have more suffered during this time towards digitalization and also incentives uh, for foreign companies, especially in manufacturing, who are very keen to relocate. Before the NCO, you know, uh, there's been a lot of promotion to, as I mentioned earlier on, to establish, to, you know, we have been promoting the established Malaysia as a regional hub. So if looking at, this has been, you know, an incentive to encourage foreign companies or investors who are looking to relocate into Malaysia, um, their businesses, their manufacturing, to make it and hub because of our connectivity, the location where Malaysia is, and the access to a the Asia Pacific region. You know, look, the government is looking at providing incentives to encourage more businesses to relocate it and set up their regional operations in Malaysia. Next slide. So I've spoken about you know what we are doing, what Malaysia, an overview about Malaysia. So what what is the opportunities for UK businesses? And later on, I will also share how the chamber can support. So in terms of opportunities for UK businesses, uh, next slide, please, Lauren. Okay, I've put technology or tech as number one because this is where. You know, companies today, especially looking for in across all sectors, how to move, you know, seamlessly into digitalization. I, I had a slide on e-commerce while I said manufacturing, you know, decline in manufacturing, decline in export. But the slide did say a 40% in increase in e-commerce. So in e-commerce, you know, 
and many companies are looking how they can move into e-commerce. So digitalization is in the top of the agenda. Some of the opportunities where UK has expertise and where even uh, agenda for, we work with the Department for International Trade, it's where, um, you know, in terms of manufacturing, they're looking at expertise in AI, cybersecurity is becoming more important, especially in today, you know, when, when more companies move into digitalization, cybersecurity is something that they need to look at. So solutions under for cybersecurity will be key. There's also opportunities as Malaysia has identified certain states to move into smart cities. So any solutions into the supply chain will be something that uh, in demand for you know looking at this the the other in the sector is of course the oil and gas sector oil and gas sector very much um, you know the regulator and also um, in the business unit is the national oil company so and looking at their needs currently it's very much on digitalization and innovation solutions optimizing operations remote monitoring you know, um, so some of these areas before the MCO, it was the you know the company was also Malaysia was also looking at decommissioning. That means um, once the plant or the platforms are no longer producing oil, how you decommission it in the most environment friendly, effective way. But currently, uh, you know, there the 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 focus I guess will very much into you know very much into looking at current issues in the short term will be digitalization and innovative solutions we will be organizing on a webinar on this area sometime uh, early july and um, you know we will reach you know if you're interested look out for that we'll work with the chamber the going back to tech um, there is an upcoming uh, webinar by the department for international trade from malaysia uh, on that, I will share after this, I uh, need share with Lauren and perhaps she can circulate that out coming up soon uh, next week, I think. So if you want to know more about tech, the opportunities in tech, the webinar will be uh, something that you can participate in. Another industry would be advanced manufacturing. Um, sometime uh, last year, the government announced you know, their master plan in adoption of Industry 4.0. So expertise in those areas is key. And green tech, again, you know, is something that um, businesses in Malaysia are looking for. I, going back to energy, renewable energy is another area that we are supporting companies um, you know, to promote UK expertise to Malaysia because there is a need uh, for that because of um, requirements to meet some renewable energy targets in Malaysia. If you're keen to know more, you can reach out to us directly uh, and then we can have a discussion on that. Healthcare. Healthcare uh, is also a priority market for UK in Malaysia in terms of, uh, again, digital solutions. Um, some of the areas is record keeping of patients, uh, telemonitoring of uh, patients, and again, you know, um, the private service, uh, the private healthcare sector is looking at innovative innovations in terms of uh, mobile apps development, elderly care, how to monitor. So these are areas that will be of interest. In Malaysia, the private hospital or private healthcare system is very much vibrant uh, in addition to the government. So, you know, even um, there are members, we have private hospitals, private medical centers who are members of the chamber and they are always looking for, you know, how to you know, showcase the facilities that are available. So specialist facilities and looking to further upskill in the areas, in specialized, specialized areas. Next slide, please. Okay, education. Education in Malaysia, UK education has always been very, very key. It's been, you know, an important sector, as I mentioned, you know, well-established sector for UK education is well-known, very credible. And currently, with the current pandemic, um, you know, uh, all the schools had to move into online, even the higher education. And some of the areas that I would like to highlight is, you know, that came to my attention even in the last few days has been 
teachers training in terms of moving into digital and digital and education technology. Uh, so, you know, and STEM subjects, you know, uh, Malaysia has always been, parents always look at, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, students, their children studying like for accountancy, studying for, you know, being a, in the medical line and all, but STEM, STEM subjects or maybe vocational training, in fact, it's with more vocational training has been very, very important. Yeah, and in demand, and the government has also been promoting TVET very much recently. Next sector would be uh, food and drinks and retail. There's always a demand. Recently, we held a webinar about the halal food, uh, the halal industry. Uh, and also coming up soon, uh, we are going to have a food and drink webinar. We can share that more. Uh, retail, I know, um, you know, Chat for sure, it's very much known for your pottery and also in manufacturing in pottery. So these are areas that maybe may interest you retail. And also I spoke about manufacturing and regional hub. In terms of, um, you know, um, again, re retail, e-commerce has been a boom in the last few months because of the current conditions. So there's, um, you know, demand for e-commerce. Many companies are looking at solutions how to you know move towards the e-commerce platform in addition um, on um, there's always demand because of the affinity with UK UK um, products uh, UK uh, cosmetics skincare, skincare products you know very environmentally product there's always an opportunity in Malaysia because more and more you know, you have people who have studied because we have a lot of many Malaysians go to UK to study and they're quite familiar with products from the UK. So there's, there's always a demand here. And, you know, when, when we go into the retail stores or grocery stores, we're always looking for UK products that we will be, you know, students were able to get in the UK and now they want to see in Malaysia. So that's something that the chamber itself trying to promote more and trying to get that demand you know, into Malaysia. In terms of, um, last but not least, of course, you know, Malaysia, the last few years have been looking at in further infrastructure developments. And um, so, uh, of course, during the COVID-19 period, um, infrastructure was put on hold, but now it's picking up. Construction and engineering expertise has always uh, been an opportunity for Malaysia, but a bit slow. Maybe it will recover in the when some of the projects are activated again. So this will be in the medium term or in the long term. So that that's a, an overview for opportunities for UK businesses. Um, so I look forward to any questions. Uh, if you know, there are any questions or any further questions on that area. This is to share with you a diverse blend of UK companies in Malaysia. As I mentioned earlier, you know, UK companies are very much well established, well known in Malaysia, the brands. These are just a snapshot and they, and they are members of the chamber. So there are many more out there that I'm not able to put in the slide. Uh, so, um, you know, it's well established. Some have been here for more than 100 years. Some are new. So, um, well recognized. UK brands are recognized in Malaysia. Next slide, please. So, with that, um, that is an overview about Malaysia. I hope I still have your attention speaking about Malaysia. I hope you, you know. But now I will share about the role of the Chamber, the British Malaysian Chamber of Commerce, um, in supporting UK businesses in Malaysia and also not just UK businesses but Malaysian businesses who have affiliations or have partnerships with the UK. Next slide, Lauren, please. Okay, about the, about the BMCC itself, because UK has been, you know, established in Malaysia for a very long time, the chamber itself, in fact, I've been told by certain senior members that before it became the British Malaysian Chamber of Commerce, we have already had a network among UK companies before 1963. But the chamber itself, you know, officially established in 1963. 
a membership-based bilateral trade organization. Currently, we host about 260 to 70 members, but saying that our network can reach out to, you know, we always, these are corporate membership, but it reaches out to beyond just 270. Our network itself, now together with our international chamber networks, it's more than 100,000, you know, contacts reach, I would say. Um, across a wide range, our membership is across a wide range of sectors. The key sectors for Malaysia and for BMCC has been education, followed by oil and gas, um, construction and engineering is a key sector, and of course, various other uh, professional services, which, you, which UK is very well known for its expertise. In terms of our membership composition, currently it stands 50% British companies, 50% Malaysian companies. Malaysian companies very much have, or these Malaysian companies, either they invest in the UK or they have partnerships, JVs with UK companies. We are very much driven by advancing the bilateral trade relations between United Kingdom and Malaysia. And the Chamber has been a catalyst in providing UK businesses in Malaysia with networking, brand exposure, knowledge sharing, and importantly, the bilateral trade support services. Next slide. This is where I mentioned about our global reach. We are part of uh, Britain in Southeast Asia. It is a network. We work closely with the other chambers in Southeast Asia the 10 other chambers in the Southeast Asia region. So if you're reaching out to us, you know, and you're looking to expand into ASEAN, we will, not just Malaysian, not just me or any of my colleagues in Malaysia, even colleagues in Singapore, we are always, you know, uh, connecting our members, UK companies into uh, connecting, you know, from Malaysia to Singapore, Malaysia to Indonesia. So uh, we are always, you know, doing that and connecting and speaking, relating to getting our clients connected all the time. We're also part of the British Chamber of uh, Commerce, the international network, and um, that has allowed us to expand our network across globally and very much, um, you know, how we have connected it to the Shetfisher Chamber. Next slide, please. Okay, what we do in a chamber. It, this may be very familiar with, you know, because you will be part of your chamber. I think um, networking and B2B engagement has been a main value that we have been creating uh, for our members. We ran, uh, we ran 40 over events last year, premium quality events. Our target uh, audience or our audience have been at the C level. And for example, our board representation has, it is the CEOs of the company, for example, the CEO of the Center Chartered Bank, uh, HSBC, uh, the C-level uh, leaders that, you know, participate our speakers. And uh, we run programs, uh, not just roundtables, big conferences. The picture here shows an SME conference that we run. And we normally have ministerial level speakers who share um, you know, the current insights, the government's uh, views on certain sectors, certain teams. We, we, we do B2B engagement. You know, we pick up the phone to call the member and say, hey, you know, someone is interested, you know, offering this kind of services. That's, uh, you know, we will, we will connect our members where we can. Our events, as I mentioned, not just big, large conferences. We do round table. Uh, bespoke events or even roundtables with the High Commissioner or government ministers. The Chamber is very well established and we have strong relationships with the government agencies like the Ministry of International Trade, Ministry of uh, and its agencies, um, investment agencies like MIDA. Some of the slides that I use is, is um, you know, uh, I must say it's compliments from the government agency itself, from our connections. So um, I will share with you later how we have moved from physical networking into digital networking, and it has been very much favorable by our members. Um, trade services is another key value of proposition that we offer, not just for our members. This is where 
we are part of the department. We are department DIT, Department for International Trade, UK's official delivery partner. So we support new UK business ventures into Malaysia. We look at, um, there are certain sectors that the chamber as a partner of DIT looked at, certain sectors directly looked after by DIT itself. We are always in constant communication with our DIT colleagues in Malaysia. The High Commissioner itself or the Ambassador is uh, it's our patron. So we, we work very closely with the Department for International Trade. Uh, the, the, so in, I will share more about the market entry services shortly. Next slide, please. One of the key areas, as I mentioned, my own uh, you know, um, experience in working is branding and exposure is very important for every company. There are UK companies in Malaysia that has been operating, but people are not aware. So I, we, we at the Chamber view that the Chamber will be a key platform if you are already in Malaysia. You know, through our platform, you will be able to say, hey, here I am in Malaysia. You know, so this is what we offer to our members in terms of, you know, using our digital platforms to tell about your story, to showcase, you know, you know your business, to, show, to tell your news. So we allow that for our members and members are always welcome to share. And our website gets about 3,000 visitors in an average in a month. Our social media platforms of Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn and Instagram where it's constantly been updated. We have about nearly 12,000 followers today and we do produce publications where it's distributed to our network across uh, the chambers around in, in our international network. In addition to our digital platform, we work very closely with our members in terms of offering strategic partnerships and sponsorship opportunities to showcase their brand. You know, a brand may be already established in Malaysia, but they, they love to work with the chamber, especially if they are promoting uh, a certain team, a certain solution, a certain product. For example, the, the picture I have here is HSBC. Everyone knows HSBC about their banking, but they were looking at promoting, you know, their leadership in digital innovation. So they decided that BMCC would be a good partner to work with on this conference and we worked with the department for international trade on this initiative to to promote the uk expertise we brought in speakers to share in terms of ai and um, blockchain our fourth value proposition to our members and our stakeholders you know in terms of the chamber has been advocacy and during this um, covid 19 lockdown or partial lockdown or we call it in malaysia movement control order it has been uh, the advocacy side so the chamber played an important role to advocate issues the impact to the businesses through our engagement with government agencies directly where we have the opportunity we write in we run surveys and share it continuous dialogue we also have sector committees uh, education oil and gas construction engineering we are looking at uh, more sector committees where uh, the chamber plays a platform, creates a platform to share the industry. Instead of a company talking to the government or the policymaker, the chamber facilitates. So it's an industry voice. And this um, service proposition to members and the UK businesses, you know, we also advocate, if, as we advocate for UK businesses, as, and this has been become very important especially during these times to share when the government has uh, implemented sops that you know there's been barriers to operate operations in malaysia operating in malaysia in a normal way or you call it the new normal we raise it directly and we see how we can come to a solution that is a win-win for the government agency to combat you know the the COVID pandemic and also for the, the value of businesses here. So um, that's the four value propositions of what we do that we offer to, um, to UK business in Malaysia. Next slide, please. Okay, this is just to give you a snapshot on the things that we do 
in Malaysia, we, you know, it's across the board. We also host trade missions, not just into Malaysia, but also from Malaysia for UK businesses into other parts. So I have one here in the second line, it shows trade mission to Myanmar. So we work very closely, as I mentioned, uh, with our chamber colleagues in the region. Next slide. We will be, I'll be sharing. So as we moved from a physical event, we as a chamber, we also had to move into a digital. So getting feedback from members, what, you know, their challenges during the lockdown, we started to do this uh, webinar series on the impact of COVID-19. So this is what, you know, uh, we did. And we also started to do trade webinar series for UK companies. and and we started and i started speaking or we started speaking you know accepting invitations to speak from other chambers to talk about the opportunities for uk businesses in malaysia and you will see every of our webinar uh, flyer that's been you know showcased here has a logo of a member and we work with members we we work with uh, except the world bank one um, we, 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 we tapped on our members' expertise and it's also an opportunity for members to brand themselves, to profile themselves during this period, to share about you know, issues on how to manage some of the issues that you know, our other members or businesses have been impacted by COVID-19. Next slide, please. Okay. We also, um, one of our flagship events, but this year we had to reschedule it because of the current uh, situation. It's our Business Excellence Award that we recognize UK businesses in, in Malaysia and also Malaysian businesses investing in the UK. We, also, we recognize a UK-Malaysia Business Partnership of the Year. So these are some, uh, as a, it's not just to, recognize and celebrate the success of British businesses in Malaysia. It also an opportunity for those companies that are participating as a nominee to profile themselves and to brand their, their brand in the market. Next slide. Okay, just uh, quickly on um, the trade and market entry services, one of the pillars of our offering. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are the official delivery partner for Department for International Trade in Malaysia currently and UK businesses if you are keen to you know looking at expanding into the region or Malaysia uh, specifically you know we have a small team of trade managers who will be able to help you in a sense um, you know beginning in initially to have a conversation with you about your organization to have a discussion with you what are you looking for or what, um, even if you're already in the market, we'll be happy to have a conversation with you to discuss, you know, how are you doing? You know, what are you looking for more? And we do, after that, do business matching services in terms of B2B, one-to-one uh, -one business matching. We work with you to identify the right partner. And um, then we organize the meetings. Of course, Currently, you know, my message to all the companies have been, we can't do uh, physical meetings. Why not we do virtual meetings? I mean, for the last, you know, 80 to 90 days, we all have been operating as near normal through virtual meetings, discussions. So why not, you know, if you are keen to expand into Malaysia, let's do the meeting through virtual. We also, you know, um, one of the other services is brief market research reports. If you're keen, we can put that together. And some of the success stories have been uh, in terms of uh, once, you know, you have done your, you have found your partner or you have found the platform to bring in your product or services into Malaysia. We support the companies to do product launches or bespoke networking events. That has been quite successful. I'll share with you in the next slide and we do trade missions. This year, we were planning to do uh, about two to three trade missions, but that has been put on hold. Currently, we are looking at uh, how to do a virtual trade mission. So if you're keen about that, uh, you know, do, do reach out to us. Next slide, please. 
Okay, here is uh, two success stories, I would say. The recent success stories, of course, we have been supporting, we have been doing, doing trade services uh, with the Department for International mm -hmm. Trade for the about uh, seven to eight years now. And this is two of our recent success stories. Naylor, Naylor Farms, it's a cabbage producer, uh, cabbage farm that's in Lincolnshire in the UK. Uh, they started off, um, you know, um, to export their cabbages into the market. And um, last year, they signed the deal with uh, KFC. You have KFC outlets in the UK. So QSR brand is the franchise holder of KFC in Malaysia. So Nailers signed a contract to supply cabbages to the, for the coleslaw you know, for KFC outlets in uh, Malaysia. In addition to that, they are also exporting their um, fresh produce like cabbages, carrots, um, potatoes. And Jaya Grocer is a retail outlet in Malaysia. And currently, they have informed us that they are in 29 Gaya, Jaya Grocer grocery stores in in uh, Malaysia. So that is, um, and today Nila Farm is of course a member of the chamber and uh, we are very proud to have them as a member. Another member was, um, is Duckums. Uh, Duckums is a producer of oil lubricants and they had the brand established in Malaysia many, many years ago. And last year they relaunched into ASEAN or the uh, Southeast Asia market. And we help them do the launch. Today, they work with third-party manufacturers to manufacture the lubricants, the oil products in Malaysia and they distribute in Malaysia. They have set up an office uh, BM, uh, in Malaysia. They use uh, BMCC's virtual office facilities. Next slide, please. Okay. This, I'm coming to the end of my presentation and I hope to take some questions. Um, this is to just to share some of the collaterals that we have in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how we support. Of course, the webinar series, do look out for them. We will share with the chamber. Um, we do have a publication on opportunities for UK businesses. And if you're already operating in Malaysia and looking at expertise available to uh, set up or to get like legal expertise, accounting expertise. We also have a compilation of catalog of services available. That, you know, a list of expertise that instead of you just going to anyone, do reach out to the chamber. And that will be, you know, my advice to a lot of UK companies that are, you know, expanding or thinking about expanding. Do reach out to the chambers directly or to the Department for International. That should be your fir first uh, contact point, you know. And if you already have a partner, do reach out to us. We'll be happy to have a conversation and a discussion with you. Next slide, please. Okay. So as I mentioned, do reach out to us. This is your contacts in our trade team in Malaysia. That's me there and two of my trade managers will be happy to have a chat with you. So, um, over to you, Lauren. I hope. Brilliant. Thank you, Jennifer. That was really interesting and really interesting to see um, what Malaysia is doing um, during this pandemic. Now, we have got a few minutes for questions. So, those of you who've got questions for Jennifer, you can ask these live now. These can be asked through our Q&A function at either the top or bottom of your screen. So if you're happy to put them in now, please. It does take a few minutes, Jennifer, for these to come through. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realise the time has passed so fast. <laughs> I know, it's very scary, isn't it? <laughs> time flies. I kept everyone know. awake. <laughs> Don't be silly. And um, if anybody's got any questions, if you want to pop it in the Q&A function or the chat function, if it's easier for yourself. And I know, Jennifer, you did say you are happy for people to contact you and the other trade managers if they do have any questions. Yes, yes. we are happy to you know, continue to be connected 
continue. If you don't have any questions now, it's okay. Uh, but we, we will be very happy to have a chat. You know, sometimes people prefer to many of these events, webinars, you know, I get an email after that, you know, asking for a discussion. We are very happy as long as, you know, if you need any clarifications, we'll be happy to, you know, have a conversation. Thank you. We really appreciate that. I don't think there's any questions. It looks like you've answered everybody's questions uh, <laughs> with your presentation. So I'd just like to thank you again, Jennifer. Thank you for taking the time to come and deliver um, the webinar for us. And thank you for those who have um, attended this morning's webinar. If you did miss the start of Jennifer's Jennifer's webinar or any of other um, of our webinars, these can be found on our webinar library on our website. I'd like to thank you again, Jennifer, and those who have come and those who have attended today's webinar. Thanks everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.